the Kerberos ticket exchange can be quite confusing. And it's it has a lot of nomenclature you're not familiar with. And it's kind of a different process, a multi-step process to get through. So yeah, it can be pretty confusing. So uh, over time, I've come up with a, an analogy I like to use, and I think a lot of us IT pros can relate to, that I call Kerberos at the company party. So we've all been to company parties, and we've all been to conferences where they have the evening social occasion, you know, is at some ballroom or some other type thing where you, everybody gets to stand around with tired feet and talk to everybody else. Uh, and they'll often serve drinks there and they'll have, you know, non-alcoholic drinks and they'll have the little portable bars that they wheel in and wheel out, you know, where you can get drinks. And, um, you, you know, maybe um, you have to provide a ticket. You get, you know, two or three tickets that you can use to get a drink and all that. And years ago it occurred to me, you know, this is a pretty good analogy uh, with a few tweaks for how Kerberos works. So imagine that you come to a company party and it's being held in a local hotel ballroom. Because it's a company party, uh, let's say um, spouses and families are invited. So therefore, all ages are allowed. Uh, alcohol will be served uh, and it is an, an open bar. Now, some, of, uh, some, some bar stations will serve alcohol and some uh, will be more kid friendly and only serve soft drinks. So with that in mind, let's step through the ticket exchange process. So the first thing that happens is you walk up to the door of the ballroom where the party is being held is that you're checked for ID at the ballroom door by hotel security. This is analogous to doing a, your first network authentication as you log on to the network where the client sends an AS request to the KDC. The next thing that, ha that, happened, that happens at the party is that, let's say your hand is stamped. Uh, the color that your hand is stamped shows whether or not you can be served alcohol. In other words, are you over 21 or not? In the computer world, this means the KDC is issuing the TGT to the client. And again, and remember that the TGT, the TGT contains the access token, the Windows access token, in the pack field of its message. In step three, now that you have, um, you had your hand stamp, and this is where it varies a little bit from, from real life, but um, grant me a little artistic license here. You ask security for a drink ticket for the bar station that serves alcohol. Now bear in mind, you know, you could be a teetotaler and then you would ask security for a drink ticket for the bar that doesn't serve alcohol. But in this case, let's say you ask for uh, the alcohol bar. And um, the IT equivalent is that the client sends the TGS request, the service ticket request, ticket granting service request, to the KDC for a particular service service. Okay, back in the real world, security gives you the ticket. Now this ticket is a little different from a typical drink ticket that you would get uh, at a conference or a party. It's kind of a, it's a slightly magical ticket. It is good for multiple drinks because it's sort of an open bar, but it is time limited. In other words, it doesn't, you can't have it all night, you can't use it the next day or anything like that. In the IT world, this, mean, this is the KDC returning the TGS reply, the ticket granting service reply. Okay, so at the party, you go to the bar station and present the ticket. The client sends uh, the application reply request to the server service in the IT world. So, and those of us that are there, you know, the, the, this works in real life. The, the server, uh, the bartender eyeballs the ticket, you know, just kind of confirming that this is not some bogus ticket that you forged or found in a wastebasket somewhere, and that it is for this particular event not for an event that was two days ago or coming up two days later, anything like that. The IT equivalent is the server service validates the service ticket. This also includes checking the timestamp and session setup continues. Now note that the bartender also looks at your hand stamp in real life to confirm that you're over 21 before they serve you. Now this is the authorization part, not the authentication part. This is the server 
uh, looks at the access token inside the pack and then authorizes you or doesn't authorize you to access the server resources. In this particular case, a nice bottle of Pinot Noir. That was actually a, uh, a bar uh, that's what's actually the bartender serving me in that particular photo. So to wrap up our discussion of Kerberos, I'll summarize it by saying, number one, Kerberos is the Windows authentication security protocol. It's used for everything throughout the Windows environment where, where uh, Active Directory domains are being used as opposed to workgroups. Kerberos uses the trusted third-party mechanism to prevent man-in-the-middle attacks. Very reliable. Most of the time, uh, if you talk to 100 uh, Active Directory administrators, uh, 95 of them will tell you that they haven't had to do anything related to Kerberos for a long time, especially if you keep your time sequence uh, in synchronization. Uh, however, something to note about Kerberos is that password hashes are included in its messages. So if you choose to, if you intercept um, Kerberos messages, it is possible with enough horsepower um, to theoret to uh, decrypt these messages. Therefore, Kerberos is best suited to running uh, in corporate intranets behind firewalls in relatively secure environments.